up, easy Beach Boy Franchise Guy, coming again with another episode of Jaguars Franchise Mode, taking on the Denver Broncos with Chris Harris Jr. As the only Superstar X Factor, I am super surprised, actually, Von Miller does not have a Superstar X Factor. As dominating as he has been, I mean, him and Broncos were pretty much single-handedly won the Super Bowl against Cam Newton and the Panthers. So I think him not having an X-Factor, not having a Superstar X-Factor, not even being a Superstar, is disrespectful for him. I get it, he's being older. I mean, I get it that, you know, he's starting to slow down a little bit, but that man is still dominant. That man still is one of the best defenders in the league. One of the best pass-rushing linebackers of this generation, pretty much. And, you know, you could thank all that to DeMarcus Ware. I mean, DeMarcus Ware went there and pretty much molded Von Miller to be like, hey, you're great and all, but hey, do this and you can be even better. But sending out our hodgepodge team right here. I mean, you got Chris Harris Jr., you got Nick Foles, you got to think of that, the return of Nick Foles right now. I mean, Nick Foles thought he was signing a, a long-term extension with us, going to finish his career up in Jacksonville. Then Chance Bishop comes in here and trades away Nick Foles to the Denver Broncos. It's like, like, oh, well, we have Joe Flacco. It's like, well, yes, we get you have Joe Flacco, John Elway. But hear me out. Nick Foles is that much better. I mean, it'd be crazy to think Joe Flacco was is better than Nick Foles. I mean, they're both in their careers right now, the same style player. An okay backup or an exceptional, or an okay starter, an exceptional backup. And I, I'm pretty sure... Everyone would say that Nick Foles would be a better starter and is a better backup and all around is a better football player currently. I mean, sure, Joe Flacco got carried through a serve on his defense. Oh, controller sink. You can't, uh, can't be winning games if your controller, controller disconnects right there. But we're up uh, tied 7-7, seven, seven, you know, 10 minutes left in the second. I mean, down by a touchdown, it's cool. It's cool right now, just gotta keep up with them, just score a touchdown, keep up with them. No, oh, no, big third down right here on second now, Ooh, down by two touchdowns right now, it's alright. Okay, I'm not sweating it. Not sweating it one bit, down by three touchdowns, right. oh, down by four touchdowns, it's, um, it's getting pretty bad really quick currently. But fourth and three right now for your Jacksonville Jaguars. We're going to run it with Crozen up the middle. He's going to get the first down. And a couple extra yards right there. 13 rushes, 48 yards. So, he's having a big game. Now, Ross and Thurber dropping back. Fires to Danny Etling. Etling with the catch right there. So, Thurber, not a bad game. 152 yards right there. No touchdowns, no interceptions. So, he's... Not as bad as he was. Still pretty bad. Firing, you know, on the run right there across his body. Got to be intercepted right there by Simmons. So, Eek. that was not not the smartest move. Of Dez. I was just talking about how good he was playing this game. That he, you know, was making smart decisions. Wasn't forcing the ball. And then as soon as I say that, he goes on and does something like that. So, not sure what he was thinking. I mean, maybe he thought number 86 right there is going to, you know, jump up. But take a look at Nick Foles in the day. 26 completions, 31 attempts, 296 yards, and four touchdowns. Not quite a seven-touchdown game like he did against, you know, the Oakland Raiders. But he's he's getting there. I'm pretty sure, if, you know, he didn't have Phillip Lindsay and, you know, had to run the ball all the time. He would have gotten there by now. But... Oh, man, that's just bad luck right there. Look at that. Another interception right there. Ball was tipped. Cravelon LeBlanc, the former Eagle right there, intercepted at this time. His third on the season. But what are the odds of that? I don't think in Madden I've ever seen an animation look quite like that. That right there was wild. Look at that. Tips off his end, shoots up in the air, and Cravelon LeBlanc comes down with it. That is... I think it popped in the air for 10 yards. Like, jeez. You know, going for a Hogan right here. And look at that. Just tips off Hogan's hands right there. Gets punched up by number 29 right there. 
Broncos, of course, get the W because, you know, they're up by, what, five touchdowns when we last saw them? Nick Foles, 296 yards, four touchdowns on the day, 78.8 completion percentage. I I don't think you can get much better than that when you all think about it. They score a touchdown, you know, every quarter right now. You know, two in the second, so... I'm surprised Jacksonville did as good as they did. And, you know, take a look at the yards, you know. 107 passing yards, 58 rushing yards, just barely broke 200 yards. I mean, 4.2 yards per play is fairly respectable right there. Not really, but kind of respectable. But Nick Foles in number seven, you know. Did something classy, though, when he went to Jacksonville. He told him that he wasn't wearing number nine anymore. That number nine was special to none other than Philadelphia. He'd only wear it in Philadelphia. But Young Ho Koo gets the touchdown, passing touchdown for the Philadelphia Eagles. The Jacksonville Jaguars. Crozen had three broken tackles, you know, 48 yards. Thurber had two rushes for three yards. And Elijah Hood had two rushes for seven yards. Max McCaffrey had a big game, 52 yards on four catches. Crozen with a big game, three for 39. Etling, you know, three for 32. Trent Sig, two for 26 with a touchdown right there. Who would, have, who would have saw that coming? I mean, Oliver, Hogan, and Murray all had less than 10 yards. Fleer allowed two sacks. Chris Gonzalez allowed a sack. And Fred Lolina allowed a sack as well. No pancakes, of course, because our guys are booty. Edmund Robinson, 14 solo tackles. My man over here is a beast. Marcus Rios, 8 tackles. Thurst, um, Thurston Armbruster, 7 tackles. Michael Hughes, um, two tackles for loss. Chris Marigos, Damon Webb had a tackle for loss right here. Let's see, Laurente McCray had a tackle for loss. So good for him. Josh Allen, a tackle for the loss and a sack. So the rookie having a pretty good season so far. Has a couple sacks already under his belt. As long as you can build a defensive line, a defensive line around him. I think have a great sophomore season, you know, but maybe hopefully double digit sacks by then. But who knows? Kicking Young Hoku is no field goals attempted, one extra point made on one extra point attempted. Punting wise, Clint Bowling had 275 yards of punting. That's a lot of punting. Seven total punts. Pretty much is like that Bears game where they forced uh, the Bears to punt eight times. Jeez, what a game that was. But into some upgrades right now, Max McCaffrey, the older brother of Christian McCaffrey. I'm pretty sure he's the older brother of Christian McCaffrey. Maybe he's the younger brother. No, I'm pretty sure he's yeah, like 95% sure he's the older brother of Christian McCaffrey. Marcus Rios gets an upgrade right here. I mean, he's doing, he's doing stuff. He's coming out. He's having fun. Austin Fleer, the tackle, you know. Gets some goes nothing like his picture, nothing at all. His face is way too skinny to be Austin Fleer. I mean, the man who allows two sacks a game every game. He is he's gonna lead the league in like sacks a lot, I guarantee it. And Justin Murray is gonna finish up the upgrades right here, upgrade his pass protector ability. But if you guys like this episode, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys were happy to see Nick Foles return, definitely tell me down in the comments down below. I mean I think response right now response was gonna be a good thing for this team. But if you guys like this episode, comment down below that and you know if you guys don't really wanna comment down below, tell me how your favorite team's doing so far. Today's the first Sunday of football season, so tell me how your favorite team's doing. Did your team win? Did your team punt eight times? Did your you know, is your season over? Did your quarterback get a season ending injury? But you know, tell me something you too. Peace out.